Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio, and today I'm a tiny bit nervous. You see, I'm going to open some more English products. It's not actually English products. You may notice down here, it's actually German products. Uh, I went to the UK, no I didn't, that's a lie. This weekend I'm going to the UK Games Expo. I went to the European International Championships. I was part of the commentary team over there for TCG. I had a wonderful time. But it was in Frankfurt, not Hamburg, as I said on the stream at one point. Sorry to anyone that may have noticed that. But it was over in Frankfurt, it was over in Germany, and I was like, well, hang on a second. If I'm, I'm going to Germany, I need to pick up some German cards. Now, some of them I'm afraid I've, I've misplaced. Uh, a German Celebrations Dawn fan, obviously. A Dragapult Prime. Kind of cool. But I picked up the Zashian V Union Collection. Here's the thing, though. Lately, my Japanese openings have been really good because Japanese packs, you know, boxes have guaranteed pulls. My English boxes, and like I say, these are they're German, but the same kind of thing, have been terrible. Like, really bad. So, the good news is we've got four packs in here, and actually, one of them is even Evolving Skies. And we all know that Evolving Skies is the best set in the Sword and Shield era. But, but I need to pull something good out of here. Something relevant. Because if not... Ugh, starting to lose the will, ladies and gentlemen. Starting to all get a bit sad. But, just for buying product, I should add. We still bought some today. Let's have a gander. Now, I love these V-Union. I love the way they do them. It's kind of hard to show them off. One of my favourite things about the Union is, you get the Jumbo. So you can see the whole card on there. Now, Zash and the Union, it's not proven to be a particularly good card up to now, which is a little bit sad. I do like that you can just deal 340 damage. You can one-hit KO V maxes. That is not something we generally see very often at all. And look, you know, you're a metal Pokemon, so you've got all things like Metal Saucer to accelerate energy. You've got Bronzong to move it around. It feels like at some point Zashian should have ended up being good. But the Union as a whole, I have seen Pikachu and Mewtwo popping up in a, in a list over in Japan. But unfortunately, even that list, it, it didn't play no Zashian, ladies and gentlemen. Zashian was nowhere to be found. Of course... It being a V-Union, there is, in fact, one more promo card, and it is Professor Burnett. Oh, a damaged Professor Burnett. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't really care as long as Zashian's okay. And it looks like Zashian's okay, so we're fine. I've got a bunch of Professor Burnett at this stage, so I'll, I'll survive. It is kind of cool to realise, Professor Burnett, there were actually two different versions because the 25th anniversary collection had the Pikachu V Union, and that meant you got Professor Burnett with the 25th anniversary stamp, which I thought was extremely cool. So, yeah, that is out there. Make your choice. V Union is super awkward to sleeve and use, etc. If I ever do play one, I'm going to petition all of my opponents to just let me use the jumbo. Because you discard these and you play it from the discard. So why not just play the Jumbo onto the field rather than mucking around with four separate cards? Either way, Zash and V-Union is cool. For a while, the V-Union were very, very difficult to get hold of. But then they've actually all been restocked on the UK Pokemon Center, which is kind of interesting. Not the US, just the UK. Uh, I haven't actually picked any of them up. I'm going to be honest, I've got German Zash in now. I don't really need the English. I do need Mewtwo, though. Maybe we'll have a think. So we've got four packs. We've got Sword and Shield and Vivid Voltage. They will, of course, be rotating at the end of this season, which is awkward. And then we've got Battle Styles and Evolving Skies. These are year two packs with your special arts and things of that nature. So, I'll be honest with you, with the run we're on, and I know it's cheeky. Can I just have an Eevee special art? One of the Eevees has a special art card. I know that's a lot to ask, and I know it's cheeky. I don't even really care. Oh, also, German Okacheke cards would be awesome. See how lucky we get, eh? So, we got ourselves a coupon. We got ourselves a battle toy. Never liked that thing. There's your Galarian Ponyta. Hey. There's your Darkness Energy. There's your Switch. Your Energy Retrieval. Heat more. Rev Hollow Chinchino. And a Cloister. Yay. 
be fair, I do like uh, so Minchino. I do like Minchino. Minchino is pretty cool. Um, not the greatest start ever, but we can be okay. Moving on to Vivid Voltage, and to be fair, a lot of the time these boxes have like one hit. And I'll be honest, right? If I'm going to get one hit, it would be nice if it came, you know, in battle styles or um, what you call it, uh, in battle styles or uh, evolving skies. So we can get, you know, those lovely special arts and things of that nature. So, we got ourselves a Whalmer. Oh, there's Riolu. Ooh, there's a Hyogun Asuke card. I do like that. They're, in year one of the Sword and Shield TCG, Okacheke was not yet drawing cards. They started in, well, what ended up being Chilling Rain for us. But Hyogun Asuke totally was that card's beautiful. Okay. There's your Zabiris. I'm not going to try pronouncing all of these for obvious reasons. Kakuna. Hey, that's kind of like what it is in English. Uh, telescopic Len. Telescopic Sight, sorry. And an Alchemy. So, so far, two packs, two non-hollow rares. I'll be honest with you, this is this is pretty much our openings lately. This is basically what we've been what we've been led to expect. Lots of non-hollow rares. I mean. Uh, in my opening of Astral Radiance, I mean, I haven't even bought any free packs of Astral Radiance, you may have noticed. And the reason really simply is, because in all my packs of Astral Radiance, all I've basically pulled, I mean, I think it's something like 14 packs. And in those 14 packs, I pulled 10 non-holo rares. It, it really does make me think twice about buying this stuff, which makes me a bit sad. So what we've got here is our Brilliant Stars pack. So, we got ourselves a Zubat. Oh, there's something. Probably just some bulk Pokemon V. But there is something. <laughs> Pantomos. <laughs> it's like pantomime because it's Galarian Mr. Rhyme. Uh, Nearfish. Cramchef. Antonia. Voldy. Oh, okay. That's not bad. I mean, we have seen lately, and it's probably going away quite soon... But uh, Corviknight V Max is actually with Arceus is seeing a bit of play and a bit of success and a bit of love. I'm not I'm not going to sit here and argue that Corviknight V Max is like the best deck in the format. It's not. But Corviknight with Arceus has been pretty cool. And you know what? I've got a German V Max. I don't think I have any German V Maxes. I do have a bunch of German trainer cards. I don't know why I quite like having random European language as trainer cards. That is pretty cool. For those, and it's, it's interesting in terms of the legality for European languages. In any European country, you can use any European language. We're finishing Revolving Skies. This is potentially the big one because that's got the best cards in. So you can use kind of like any European language. But, and you know, in Canada, you can use um, French. But you can't. It's always weirded me out that you can't use Spanish in the USA Despite large sections of the country speaking Spanish as their first language. That's always weirded me out just a little bit. Right, okay, come on. Give me something good to finish off. Give me something to something to really make this a good opening. So there's your Amolga. There's your Lotad. There's your Grass Energy. That dude's in Unite. Never liked him. Oh, we got some gloves. A Rev Hollow. Ma, for goodness sake. And we finish off with a Lilligant. Brilliant. So, four packs, three non holo rares. It's not even a well centered Lilligan. This side's way heavier. So, four packs, three non holo rares. We did get a Corviknight V Max, to be fair, which is kind of cool. But there's something about opening four packs and seeing that three of them are basically just complete bulk, which makes me sad. Now, the good news is we did get ourselves our V Union. Which is, of course, the main reason to buy the box anyway. And that's why I, I do tend to try and make sure I buy stuff like this. Because at the end of the day, even though like, the Corviknight's fine, but even though my pulls were, I think it's fair to say, not particularly good, I still got the Zashian V Union, and I get the feeling that nobody really cares about these V Union at the moment. But it does seem like, you know, they're getting harder to find. In the US, it's getting much more difficult to find. Although, I know some stores have them, but in some places, you can't really find them. They were nigh on impossible to find in the UK until they went back on the Pokemon Center recently. So I do get the feeling that before too long, these V-Union are going to be very difficult to find. 
which is awkward. It's going to be legal for another year. They should be rotating out in end of August next year in 2023. So, you know, down the line, these could be a pain to find. I like that I, I have them now, frankly. So, yeah, usual deal, ladies and gentlemen. Comment, like, subscribe. Tell me if you've opened any of these V-Union boxes and whether you had any better luck. Go nuts in, go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you, oh, you know all this good stuff. Comment, like, subscribe, all that. Uh, check out Patreon. Look after yourselves till next time. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio. Bye!